Hello and welcome to another episode of Fintech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb. Today, I am very delighted to be taking you all out to a very, very sunny, I'm told, Zurich, which is what, 35 degrees, guys? It is, it is, Toby. <laughs> so uh, I can see it, I can one. see I can see it with the sun coming into, and you've done very well to dress up so formally for us. Yes, thank you, thank you. I hope you're going to be going into sunbathing mode very soon after this as well. But uh, listen, it's, it's great to have you both on the show. Niels Michael. Um, we've been having a little chat beforehand. Love the idea of what's happening with you, with your business, uh, Additive, and and uh, very very keen to find out a lot more about it and and you guys. But let's kick off uh, in the traditional form with a couple of introductions. Uh, Michael, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Okay, my background. I founded once upon a time this company, Additive, and um, uh, since then it developed in, in different directions, and now I'm in, I'm really excited. Um, uh, well, seeing the potential and the results we have now, and having a global business that um, uh, is still has still the spirit of innovation and uh, challenging the status quo of an industry, and this is that was driving me. Fantastic, and I love I love the the, the whole uh, sort of founders drive and ambition, and seeing that sort of uh, evolution of a business. It's something which always uh, is fun to get into. So we'll be doing a little bit of that later on today as well. Nils, tell us about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Toby. Uh, so have the pleasure of being uh, seven weeks now, um, actually, uh, with, <laughs> uh, with Additive as CEO. Know the company as a client since over 10 years inside out, actually. They built digital uh, wealth journeys uh, for my IFA models at Swiss Life before. Um, they did um, vertical work in the mortgage part uh, for me. So. It's not a complete surprise those seven weeks uh, now with regard to that, but now looking really um, into things. Um, I was an executive board member of Swiss Life responsible for the international business of um, Swiss Life Group for um, over 13 years. And uh, with that, um, um, you know, hopefully have fundamental and deep knowledge about distribution channels, uh, either asset managers, IFAs, um, banks and you know everything what financial distribution outside is. Fantastic! I love the idea of someone there who's uh, who's been on the other side of the fence and liked the company so much that they joined it. And uh, and uh, we'll come into that. I'd like to explore that a little bit later on as well about you know what what what's uh, what what sort of I guess um, inspired that sort of choice. And Michael, from your side of things, which which uh, said, look, it's a difficult thing for a founder to bring a CEO into a business, isn't it? And uh, it sounds like for someone who's been there and known as a as a customer, that can be a brilliant place to, to start with that. So we'll move on to that in a, in a little bit as well. But before we move down that channel, I'd love to find out a little bit more about the company. Michael, tell us a little bit about the company, your mission, you know, your, your passion. What's, what's the story behind the business? Originally, we haven't been a technology company. We um, always focused on um, uh, business development and at that time mainly in the publishing industry and sports and sports marketing industry. And we went into technology because like we had some great business development ideas for our clients, but not the technology for and couldn't source it. So we thought if there is a need for, let's do it ourselves. And here we are. Then, then we had several verticals, not only financial service industry, and like seven years ago, seven and a half years, eight years ago, we just have realized um, that this is such a dramatic structural shift in that industry due to digitalization. It's not only the digital distribution, but just how the whole value chains are going to be orchestrated and managed and uh, in going forward. And um, uh, we fully focused, spinned off all other businesses and fully focused on um, uh, providing business models which are digitally enabled to our clients and do it as efficient as possible with then when we believed in 2016 17 that we really believed that everything's going to be a service including balance sheet and yeah. um, uh, we, we, we didn't believe anymore in uh, in classical enterprise software we have seen this cloud and the potential of the cloud and the apis and as a business development company on the business side, 
this is just like paradise where you, you can really redefine how industries work and how financial services get distributed. And actually, this is what we do. We are like, on one hand, very much business oriented. So we want to do technology that have a business impact and an impact, um, uh, a positive impact for the end users. And, um, uh, and, and here we are. So we combine these two worlds. This is, um, uh, it's fascinating being in an industry that is redefining itself and redefining financial services also for um, the communities and the society. And wealth in particular is very important there. It definitely is. And when you when you saw that sort of opportunity and, and I guess that sort of metamorphosis you know, into a tech tech business, is your background technical? No. So it's a really interesting <laughs> sort of way, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Which I love that. And I, and I, and I kind of I'm not a I'm banker. Not... <laughs> I'm not an IT <laughs> I kind of figured you were gonna say that as well from, from the way you, you led that out. So what gave you, I mean, I'm interested, what gave you the confidence to say that that was a route? I mean, obviously you, you saw the vision of it and you said, right, this is, this is where the future of that, of that goes. But it takes a bold move to, to, to sort of evolve a business based on a, you know, on a hunch without that sort of skill set. And look, I think part of the, the, you know, the great skill set of a founder is to bring people in who can do the things that you want to do and see the opportunity and then and fill the team with people who, who want to do that. But it's still a bold move, right? What, what gave you the confidence behind that? It's always a journey and an attitude. It, well, it's not that you don't get up in the morning and you have the idea, you know. You just yeah. start to be fascinated about, about the topic and you see, um, uh, well, potential to um, put question marks behind the status quo, which is the attitude. And yeah. when, you, when you love to build things, when you love to put question marks about status quo, how can we improve that? And when you love to build things, it's a journey. And there you learn. Actually... Yeah. I, I had like so like this key um, uh, moment when I have realized that um, uh, that the digital world will change the industry upside down was a small project we did at that time for Credit Suisse where we have been the first ones distributing a pillar three eight called here it's similar to an ISA in UK and um, uh, was still on out of the marketing we put it on the web page and it was an unbelievable success regarding distribution without any advertising and nothing. So, so, so it was so. Much, it was the first one. It was somehow obvious that there is a need. You know, like yeah. it has been. It was I think it was the best performing channel, and um, then unfortunately the bank didn't proceed because they thought we want to have people in the branch. But we just have realized that's going to change. That's going to change how the industry works, and um, uh, and just like this well, event. Um, uh, um, brought us to the conclusion that we solely focus on that and spin off all of the vertical was in telco and in sports and in uh, retail and so on. And yeah, here we are. So, so you, had, you had existing, you had existing business in those areas, and you decided, right, we'll yes. walk away from that to focus. I mean, yes. yeah, that that that's also something there, which I, I imagine in terms of you know the confidence of you. I, I get that that you've seen something, you see, you, you see a piece which you can go through. The ability to leave things behind, the discipline to leave things behind. I think sometimes one of the most difficult things as a founder as well, because it's working. You know, I, I, I would imagine the business is working in those other areas. I imagine it's revenue streams that you can continue to, to go through. What made you put all your uh, all your chips on on red? Two things. First, like I've been in business development and transformation in the media and publishing industry. And when you when you see how like this publishing industry, newspaper industry, and so on turned upside down since like. 2000 to today yeah, it's yeah. like it has well the industry has been eaten up by google and facebook and by much more efficient models huh? and auto um, uh, consumer behaviors and i've seen that and also seen the, the the mistakes the industry did because they want to stick to um, a, a business model which has been somehow obvious that it's going to change dramatically and didn't see the opportunity on the other side so i've i've went and i've seen this, exactly the same patterns in the financial service industry yeah and there yeah. where you have really structural shift for the whole industry there you have great opportunities yeah love that i love that and, and and i think it's uh i think it's a a move that not enough people make and not enough people have got the, the vision and the boldness and the courage to actually go through that so a, a lot of uh, a lot of respect to you for doing that it seems to have worked out all right for yourself and there was on the on the, coming back to that piece about being a uh, the poacher term gamekeeper the customer who decides they like the business so much they need to be a part of it so that's about that journey for you well, look, for me, my, my journey that 
Um, I took with regard to that, if I start uh, a bit personally with regard to that, I was actually tired of executive board meetings, audit committee meetings, other stuff uh, around, uh, uh, which are around group functions. It was a good time, but I thought it's, um, it, it's the right time to make that move. Content-wise, it's clearly uh, what drives me the chronic under-provision of investment and financial services that we see outside there, actually, which uh, fintech, in our view, from, from a big consolidator as Swiss Life, uh, fintechs have not changed that situation to a large deal. We thought that might happen, but it didn't happen, if we are, if we are honest enough. Now, however you call it, I do believe that embedded finance has a real chance to move that forward towards a greater inclusion of people um, who have uh, no access so far. And what we see in the market um, with huge protection gaps out there, huge pension deficits out there, we can see that uh, the offering or what, what um, additive can bring uh, uh, to the market sh should include together with our clients, um, you know, many more mass affluent clients and bring them into a, a coherent system of financial provision, which I do believe is important uh, mm. going forward. And it's interesting because what we currently see and what sometimes the big players still say, no, it's not the case, you wait, we are the big brands out there and we are driving the machine. No, the value chains are breaking up. Uh, with regard to that, there's enormous pressure out there and people realize um, I have a huge marketplace. Uh, for example, if you are a retailer and in Switzerland or somewhere else, uh, you probably have 3 million family clients um, uh, on your platform um, and I want to work with them. I want to work with them. And embedded finance is about something which, you know, where you suddenly have a contextual background for those people. You don't have to, um, uh, uh, customer acquisition costs are naturally low because the client is there. And therefore, I think we can contribute a lot um, to the improvement of, of, of this situation going, mm -hmm. going forward. Now, it, it may sound not too humble because you would ask yourself, well, why should small additives move that? But platforms will move that uh, uh, forward and they will be used uh, by clients, by the financial institutions, by all the other players and create new ecosystems which will lead and hopefully resolve over time uh, the issue of financial inclusion. There's a lot of conversation in there at the moment about the platform economy and uh, and opportunities within within that sort of space. And I think you're, you're exactly right to be positioned in it. And I love the fact that what you're talking about there isn't I'm stagnant in one particular area per se, or yeah, you know, I'm looking at this for a financial move or whatever it may be. It's it's a, it's about something there which is purpose driven. And I think that's such an important part of of an exciting part of someone coming into a business at a C level position. That this is this is a, a a move that seems from what you've just said there, there is a problem to solve. It's something I'm passionate about solving, something which we can do better and a real opportunity to see an evolution in the marketplace that can make a, re make a real difference. Michael, I want to talk to you about that, that, that sort of move because you know, the, the company I, I know it, it would, have, would, have, uh, would have been built. It's a difficult thing to, to sort of let your baby go at various different phases to bring in uh, C-level you know, people into a business to see that evolution. It seems like you're very... Uh, visionary in what you're doing and, and sort of uh, bold in some of your decision making but um, tell me about that sort of decision to to, to bring in a CEO is this the first CEO you brought in beforehand what was it about Nils that said right this is the right time the right person and and uh, and how I'm ready to sort of see the business grow and and, and move that on as well Should I go out or no <laughs> well first first like <laughs> if you want to go out there and conquer uh, conquer the world it's much more fun to do it together with a body. Very true. So very true. The first one. The second one is like um, overconfidence bias is not probably um, a, a, a good advisor. Hence means me personally and all my strengths and all my weaknesses. And when you grow a company that fast as we are growing, you have um, 
complete, well, you have to change your style, how you manage the company and how you change the culture several times. Huh? So like it's a construction yeah. site, which is never ending. And um, uh, and I came to the conclusion that um, uh, that Niels, not that I need the CEO, that Niels fits best as a true companion on that journey. Because I yeah. think for CEO, I just, um, um, Cortez is so, we, we, we played, on different continents, we are growing exponentially. We see huge demand. We uh, for finance and wealth as a service. We are pioneers um, in, in, a, in a lot of regards, and um, uh, these opportunities once in a lifetime. And I want to have a great time and don't mess up the opportunity. And here we are. So that's the main. And I think it's the most important decision the company, the, the, the company on the journey has to take. For for me, with regard to that. Um... Um, obviously, Michael is a visionary uh, with regard to that, and we know each other very well. Key point for us from a management perspective uh, going forward is now to focus and to execute on, on, on what we have built uh, with regard to that. And uh, there is still, you know, there are wild opportunity out there currently. We have a huge geographical setup uh, with regard to that. Uh, and you need to concentrate, you need to focus, um, and the proposition is that strong on the platform now. There are missing pieces, there will be always missing pieces with regard to that, but um, uh, we want to play it now out, you know, we want to play it out uh, now, and it's also uh, uh, this current scenario uh, also of additive is about saying no, you know, picking the right clients, what kind of jobs do you want to do? You sometimes get drowned into two IT enterprise related job, which leads you nowhere with regard to the further development of the platform uh, uh, in the geography. So we now need to slice it nice and neat and take the platform, take the platform with the clients, with our clients uh, to the market, look at the verticals, decide precisely how deep we want to produce. We are obviously very deep in the wealth part uh, with regard to that. Um, we are very strong on the mortgage side. It doesn't need to be that deep on the insurance side with regard to that. Where do you partner up? Where do you add uh, those things? Uh, and where, at what point do you hit the market uh, with those products? And uh, this is, um, we have good conversations around that and hopefully, um, uh, some very good decisions going forward. I think this is absolutely key now. I think there's a lot of exciting things that you just guys have just touched on. None, none more so than the fact that I've done over 300 of these episodes over the last few years, and uh, I don't. There's a, there's a word you use which I don't think is used enough in business. Full stop. But certainly not in in, in the space that, that you're. You know, it's not. I don't think wealth, wealth tech, and fun. Are two words that sort of or three words that coexist at <laughs> various different stages and and i love the idea that this is about you know fun and going on a journey and and uh, and building something up and and the attitude that clearly you guys have is is, is fundamental to that and i think that you know when i look at the best businesses that i've worked with that i've seen when i look at when i look at a common thread of of hyper growth businesses who are, who are doing amazing things in the industry there is a personality and a charisma and a, and a, and a fun factor that exists in, the, in those businesses. And I think it's wonderful to see it. And it's wonderful to see you guys, you know, taking a serious error of business and bringing a bit of humor and, and, uh, and, and character and personality to it at the same sort of stage. The other thing I think is very interesting that you mentioned there is, is the, the ability to recognize strengths and weaknesses. And, and, you know, just in the way that both of you answered those, that, you know, that question, you can see where the symmetry of, of, uh, of how the two pieces you know, work together from the from 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 a sort of very visionary piece to this is how we're going to make it happen and and uh, dovetail in and I think you know when you've got a senior team together, that to me is always something that's very very important in in uh, in putting those those businesses together. I want to talk. I want to touch on that growth piece because you talked there about a, a number of times about the growth story of, of the of the business and you're saying that you're scaling and and growing and and doing some cool things. Tell us a little bit about what that looks like. Talk to us about what what fast growth means to you where you're at at the moment, what sort of stage of the journey you're at, the company growth, what's coming up? Let's talk about the model. You know, like um, uh, one of the reasons why enterprise, enterprise software and software itself doesn't doesn't really work is that, okay, everybody reinvents the wheel. 
then they integrate it endlessly in legacy environments and so on. Okay, fair enough. It can be okay for some, but um, uh, but I, but we are convinced that this is too expensive for everybody, huh? for the client, for the bank or insurance, and also for us. <laughs> so it just doesn't, you know, and it's very hard to scale, you know. So and everyone who says no implementation, inflation work, and so on, it's it's fun to scale, or it's not. <laughs> so and it also doesn't solve the problem because it's like. Um, technology is um, a strategy agnostic. It just enables you to do things. So yeah. what we're focusing on is offering to markets a platform that on which you can produce wealth management, mortgages, credits, insurances, and part of it was not the whole value chain there, and um, uh, and, and on other services. And the big difference is is along this value chain of these different verticals. You can operate on our platform by yourself, or you can let it operate by regulated partners, views, and like um, Saxo, all the banks, um, uh, insurers, market data are already integrated there. Huh? So, 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 so there is no need for classical IT projects, implementation in data centers and so it's there and you consume it huh? and you consume it selectively. That means that um, uh, it's not only the, the, the digital journeys or the portfolio management or some risk analytics and so on that is offered to you. It's a whole operating model that is offered to you, which is flexible based on the flag open architecture in sourcing. That changes how we can play along the value chain. And that also changes who can benefit from it? Because as a life insurer, you can add wealth management or whatever insurer wealth management to it. And you have the whole journeys, including the regulated partners, helping you to deconserve that. As a bank, not having wealth management there, you can add it. As, as I said, in some before, retail or whatever, you can add financial services and embed it in your existing propositions. And that changes, um, uh, uh, well, the way financial services can be distributed. And it's also a very efficient way because, because you don't do the same integration work 20 times, do it once and everybody can profit from it. And so these scale effects, and these network effects. And yeah, and there and it's like the foundation for growth. And that's, mm. that's totally to example that additive yeah. is typically in the boardroom. So we take a strategic view together with the clients on those business models. Those business models, uh, uh, you know, have typically huge marketplaces. It could be IFAs, it could be asset managers, health insurers, others. And they are looking for complementary financial services that they want to offer in their existing customer journeys to embed mm -hmm. them into that. And this is getting into the minds now. Before it was a bit blah, blah, blah over the car, uh, uh, last you know, three to five years, at least from my role that I've seen before. But this becomes now very tangible because you have those examples out there. It's a limited investment that you take. It's a limited risk that you take um, as um, uh, uh, such a client uh, with regard to that. You get the full efficiencies from day one because you source based on the most efficient partners and processes that are around there. Um, the processes are bulletproof with regard to that. And uh, that just gives you, as a management team, additional strategic options to work with your clients in the ecosystems. And I guess that's a bit, Michael, the story. And our efficiency, you know, we hopefully become better in implementing, reading, uh, the needs of the clients there and implementing and deliver our solutions even faster than what mm. we did before. Because then as a um, um, uh, as additive, uh, if you have looked at the journey um, once or twice in certain jurisdictions and you have sourced the partner on the platform, on the APIs with regard to that, you can deliver it even more solid and quicker out in the market. Um, then also with higher margins um, over time than before. I guess that's, if you look at that, that's the basic, there we are very strong. 
and yeah, reading, yeah. reading, reading together with the clients, uh, 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 you know, how they want to uh, move forward with their marketplace is one of the most fascinating things that, that actually you could do, uh, because you're, you're in the middle um, uh, of the strategy discussion where you can really add value. Yeah, I think that you know, I, I go back again to so, sort of the common traits of the uh, you know, the impressive businesses that we've had on this on this show, and I think you, know, you, you highlight it there. It's listening to customers and understanding that particular issue and saying how can we be you know, going back to the purpose, passion, you know, the theme of what I think we've been talking about so far is how can we be passionate about the problem and, and solving that further forward. And look, you know, right from the offset, you said the wealth management industry is transforming at the moment. You've been talking about how. Um, you know, wealth tech has a, has a specific role within that in, in you know, creating something that I think has got a, a massive potential to improve um, not just an industry but lives behind that and opportunities behind that and you know, create wealth behind, behind that. It's a really powerful piece to be play, playing with. As a, as a business at the moment, your, your headquarters, if I'm not mistaken, out there in, in, in Zurich, what does the uh, what does the future look like? I mean, it, it, how 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 global does this become? What's the ambition? What's the uh, what's the potential for you guys to be looking at? Well, well today, well today we have the, well, the Frankfurt office for um, uh, managing uh, managing European part. We are managing out UK today out of Zurich. The UK is our biggest market by far. So the next one was probably going to be the London office. We're gonna, we have a Dubai office, we manage Middle East out of there, we just like next week or in two weeks we roll out for example in Saudi Arabia, we are in, in the Emirates, uh, we now clarifying if we can end the Qatar, um, uh, and out of Singapore we manage uh, Asia Pacific area with clients in Singapore but also for example Indonesia and very fast growing as well like Philippines. Um, uh, so this is our Europe, Middle East, um, Asia Pacific this is our footprint by today, and we see there are more than enough to do in the areas there, where we focus on, and especially markets where you have a rising middle class um, uh, and a new affluent segment um, that there like needs to add wealth management, wealth management services goes very fast. And with our platform approach, we not only bring the technology, the whole operating model, advisory journeys, model portfolios, whatever you need from it. Um, uh, and, and, and then you, well, it's easier and faster to implement it, to roll out um, uh, in, in your society. And last but not least, and I think this is one of the most important things to consider as an, as an economist, it's when, what, is, what does digitalization actually do? It also, marginal costs start tend to zero yeah with that you can offer the same services to the mass markets including wealth and financial inclusion the same quality of portfolios as you will give today to a high net worth and you can make money on it even and relatively facing the same so somebody saving a dollar a week to profit from investing in uh, professionally managed portfolios. Just because like, this is a bank. Mm. So, so, so just the opportunities there was to change for these kind of societies and countries, it's tremendously huge. And this, mm. uh, so there is a lot of work to do still in that, in that, in that areas and markets we're in. And, um, uh, and we, we stick to it. You're not going to be shy of uh, shy of work to do. Then it's going to be a busy no, time. No, not at all. Look, like, just like <laughs> just the example of the Philippines. Like in Philippines, we have great strategic partners. Atram. Atram is the biggest independent asset manager um, uh, in in on the Philippines. In the Philippines, I think you said. Anyway, and actually, they used our platform and technology to build their own wealth management and um, uh, um, operations on it. And together, we offer wealth as a service to other banks and wealth managers and IFAs. They can, on the platform, produce and consume the regulated services there and add wealth management um, to their offerings. And this is a, a great opportunity for everybody. And that way, we can generate that. But I think it's the most important thing um, uh, as a company 
as a platform company anyway to generate collaboration dividends for all. Let's maybe let's maybe add for the Atron case uh, to Philippines, uh, for example. I find particularly interesting, and that was uh, uh, well, kind of a wow effect for me as well with regard to our services. Once um, uh, uh, how I see them is to bring the product, the solution in the right form at the right time to those clients. And for example, for that example, uh, Atram, where it is, you know, we have, we orchestrate a purely self-service offering that would be like a traditional robo-advice, uh, uh, which you know, but we also support the whole hybrid wealth model of them that is with financial advisors. Now that can be pure financial advice. It can also be discretionary models that uh, uh, that they play out there. And then they have, you know, different distribution models uh, where they engage in the platform, where they just find for their clients the right needs. What is the kind of level where clients, what's what's the need for them? What's What's their view of collaboration? Some of them they really want to do the investment decisions by themselves. Um, uh, some of them uh, uh, like to have a guided architecture. Some of them want an advisor with regard to that. And that's orchestrated on that platform, is sourced out of one end, and then together with the client, brought to the right point uh, in time for the clients. It's fascinating, isn't it? And uh, I could be talking about this for a long time. I told you half an hour would disappear very very quickly which it has but i want to finish with you, know, you guys and, and the business and say look tell us about uh, who should be reaching out to you what can they can expect for you what's exciting that's going to be i mean look you're not going to be short about what's exciting with the business at the, at the moment it feels like a business that is going to be constantly evolving and and, and generating but tell us uh, who should be getting in touch with you who you can help and what they should be uh, what you know what, what they should be expecting from you if you want to add wealth management call us if you <laughs> like to add mortgages, mortgage operates, well, of course. If you would like to add uh, insurance and insurance bonds, call us. If you would like to have propositions that goes across all these different domains, call us. You not only get the technology, you also profit from the ecosystem where you can source um, the regulated services underneath. Be, courageous. Be, be courageous with your marketplaces. Reach out for your clients that you are co currently covering. Don't be frightened about IT projects. It's not an IT project with regard to that. No. Don't, don't, don't be frightened about, you know, is that regulatory covered and how should I do that? This is resolved today. And imagine that there's going to be a bit of fun thrown in there as well for, uh, for anyone who's, who's work, working with the pair of you. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I'm pleased to say that, you, you know, following this, you'll be able to get the shirts off and uh, get back into T-shirts and flip-flops. No, 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 no. We got, that's great. <laughs> Look, like, the big, big difference is because we, we don't sell functionalities. You know, we yeah. sell the output, which is a financial service you can consume and, and embed in, in, into your business and in, into existing customer journeys. It's, in the end, nothing else than how you can define the next generation of financial services. And I think white shirts represent the financial services. At least. <laughs> 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 you've got to you've got to have something to stick it stick with the old haven't we so yes. it's been a it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to both of you thanks so much for coming on the show sharing the story um i uh, you know very often on this show i speak to great people and, and and i've used it as my sort of personal mba as you hear the stories behind all of it what i've loved about this 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 uh this episode it's just the the enthusiasm, the passion, the fun, everything that's come out, come out of it as well at the same time. So I'll, I'll be watching the uh, the story very, very closely. If I can do anything to help as it moves further forward, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. And I wish you both the very, very best of luck. And please, if you're watching and want to get in touch with Nils and Michael and find out a little bit more, do reach out to them. I'm sure you're not going to be disappointed. And gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thanks so much. Thank you for having us. Absolute it's pleasure. And thank you all for watching. talking to you. Thanks. We'll Thanks. Thanks. My pleasure. See you soon. And uh, we will Cheers. see you all soon on another episode of FinTech Focus TV. Thanks a lot. Yeah.